Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, in this lecture, we will discuss residual debt resorption. I would like to include definition, classification, pathogenesis, rate of resorption, resorption pattern, pathology of resorption, then epidemiology, etiology, diagnostic aids to detect RRR, consequences and treatment modalities of residual dredge resorption. First of all, we have to define the term residual dredge resorption. It is defined as a term which is used for the diminishing quantity and quality of the residual dredge after the teeth are removed. And this uh, complete tension of wearing which may have an adverse effect on health of both oral as well as denture supporting tissues. And the problem of residual dredge resorption seems to occur as a direct sequelae of wearing complete dentures. So we have already discussed the sequelae of wearing complete dentures. You have gone through that. Coming to the classification of RRR, that is residual dredge resorption. So the residual dredge resorption can be classified into many ways. According to Brainer Mark et al. in 1985, the ridges were classified on the basis of bond quantity and quality by radiographic means. So, the bond quantity, it is classified into classes A to E. In class A, the most of the alveolar bond is present. In class B, moderate residual ridge resorption occurs. Class C, advanced residual ridge resorption occurs. Class D, moderate resorption of the basal bone and class E is extreme resorption of the basal bone. On the basis of bone quality, Lecom and Saab described four bone qualities for the anterior region of the jaws. This classified into classes 1 to 4. In class 1, almost the entire jaw is composed of homogeneous compact bone. So in the picture, first picture, it's shown that almost the anterior jaw is composed of homogeneous compact bone. In class 2, there is a thick layer of compact bone surrounds a core of dense trabecular bone. In class 3, a thin layer of cortical bone surrounds a core of dense trabecular bone. And class 4, a thin layer of cortical bone surrounds a core of low density trabecular bone. So according to Mish, he described four bone densities found in the anterior and posterior dentulous regions of maxilla and mandible. D1 bone is primarily dense cortical bone. So in the picture D1, it shows dense cortical bone. D2 bone has thick dense to porous cortical bone on the crest and calls trabecular bone within. Then D3, it is thin porous cortical bone on the crest and fine trabecular bone within. And D4, it is fine trabecular bone. And D5, it is immature non mineralized bone. So additional one density that is D5. So that is an immature and non mineralized bone. Coming to Atwood's classification. Here, the Atwood have classified the residual dredge resorption into six orders. And this is the most important classification for residual ridge resorption. So in order 1, it is pre-extraction. Order 2 is post-extraction. Order 3 is high, well-rounded. Order 4 is knife edge. Order 5 is low, well-rounded. And order 6 is depressed. So next classification, according to American College of Prostatists, it is based on bone height in mandible. Okay. So the ma in mandible, uh, the mandibular bone height is the only determinant for this American College of Prostatists classification. So this classification into four types: type one to type four. In type one, it is residual bone height of 21 millimeter or greater, measured at the least vertical height of the mandible. So here the residual bone height is. 21 mm or greater. In type 2, residual bone height of 
16 to 20 mm. In type 3, that's the alveolar bone height of 11 to 15 mm. And type 4, that's the vertical bone height of 10 millimeter or less. So this is based on the bone height in mandible. So next is cell cells classification. He classified the resulted resorption into groups. Group 1 to group 4. In group 1, high muscle attachment and minimal resulted resorption. In group 2, severe resulted resorption with pain. Group 3, absence of resulted and group 4, severe resorption of basal bone. So the next classification given by Cal and Bata, they classified the degree of alveolar bone resorption in mandible and maxilla. So in mandible, there are three classes, class 0 to class 2. Class 0 is moderate resorption, class 1 is high degree of resorption and class 2 is extensive resorption. In maxilla, classes 0 and 1 only, that is 0 is least degree of resorption and class 1 is extensive degree of resorption. So, according to Weichel and Swoop, classes 1 to 3. In class 1, it is up to one third of original vertical height is lost. In class 2, from one third to two thirds of vertical height lost. And class 3, two thirds or more of the mandibular height lost. So, that's all about classification of residual resorption in detail. In the next lecture, we will discuss pathogenesis of residual ridge resorption. Thanks for watching. Stay home, stay safe.